In today's video, we investigate the coolest uses of V8 engines outside of cars. As it stands, we've put over 15,000 miles on the Charger Hellcat long-termer. I've been daily driving it, and it's fair to say the driving experience is dominated by that lump up front. The 6.2 liter supercharged V8, which we found out last year, is putting out 751 horsepower. The Hellcat Hemi has to be one of the ultimate V8 ever put in a road car. And I think it's fair to say that the V8 is the greatest engine layout ever invented. The list of legendary cars that have been powered by a V8 is almost endless. But did you know that the V8 is so handy and versatile that it has been used in applications outside of the car world? Well, here are three of the coolest uses of V8s ever. Just to flip back to cars for a second, our other V8 on the channel, this Jaguar XKR, is so nearly finished. And how good does it look? It just needs some different wheels that we're going to put on it, and then it's good to go. And we used today's video sponsor, Car Vertical, to get a full comprehensive report on the history of this car. And it came back with an amazing result. No accidents, no outstanding finance, no theft, nothing dodgy with the mileage. But it turned out that this was a US car that was then imported to Japan, probably through a person that was involved with the military. And then the guys at Swallows bought it back and it has sat here ever since. That means this XKR has circumnavigated the globe. That's quite cool. And thanks to Car Vertical, you can find all this stuff out. When buying a second-hand car, especially through this video, one with a V8, Car Vertical is the perfect tool to make sure you aren't buying something with a dodgy history. Let's take this V8 car as an example, a 2013 BMW M5. It's not quite a V10 one, but still pretty cool. If you type in the reg or VIN number, you will get this report, where you can see there's an amber warning in the accident section. Scrolling down the report, you can see the MOTs it has passed, any advisories it's had. Then here, in the activity section, you can see it experienced damage in 2019, damage again in 2020, and then it was up for sale in 2020 as well, after the damage, and then it was scrapped soon after. Scroll down to the photos and all hell breaks loose. The M5 was involved in a massive crash. From the front, it's actually quite hard to tell that it's still an M5 or even a BMW. That is a big hit. If you ever came across this car, this report would tell you to run for the hills. Make sure you protect yourself from dodgy cars by using our exclusive link in the description below or the discount code DRIVETRIBE to get 10% off when you use Car Vertical. Thank you to Car Vertical for sponsoring today's video. Back to the studio. I'm going to come straight in with an application that I think is unrivaled. If we were to all sit at a big boardroom table and have A4 sheets of paper and printed on those were every single man-made moving machine, this thing would be head and shoulders above everything else. And that is the Lockheed SR-71 Blackbird. <laughs> The SR-71 was one of four aircraft in the Blackbird family, alongside the A-12, the YF-12A and the M-21. Reaching speeds of over Mach 3.3, that's over 2,500 miles an hour, and reaching altitudes of 90,000 feet, the SR-71 was the ultimate stealth aircraft of the 20th century. It replaced the U-2 spy plane and therefore it was only a reconnaissance aircraft. The SR-71 could take a picture 72 miles wide from 85,000 feet with a resolution of one foot. So it would fly over the Soviet Union and take pictures of whatever it wanted because it could outrun any aircraft 
it could even outrun a missile. If a Soviet missile was fired at the SR-71, the pilot could simply put down the accelerator and fly away from the missile. It was that quick. Nothing looks cooler than this thing, nothing. But the SR-71 would never have made it into the air if it wasn't for the good old American V-8. Of course, the aircraft wasn't powered by a V8. It had two after-burning turbojet engines that put out roughly 25,000 pounds of thrust each, but it did use two V8s combined to effectively form a starter motor. The Lockheed team had to come up with a method of cranking those turbojet engines, and it just so happened that a couple of members of the team had race car experience. So they devised what were called starter carts that would be wheeled under the wings of the SR-71 to start up those jet engines. Each starter cart had two Buick Wildcat V8s in them, each putting out around 390 horsepower. Those engines were then combined using a transmission and belt system that would combine into a common output shaft that would be put at 90 degrees and go straight up into the jet engine. The V8 would then rev at 5,000 RPM, which would crank the jet engine to 3,200 RPM, at which point it would fire up. There wasn't an overspeed clutch system though, so there had to be a button on the starter cart to disconnect the output shaft, otherwise the SR-71 would run away with itself and over-rev those V8s. There are numerous stories of engineers clicking that button and the output shaft not descending and all of his mates having to run in and manually disconnect it before rods and bearings flew everywhere all over the hangar. And all of this was happening while fuel was literally dripping onto the ground below the aircraft. Because of how high the aircraft got to and the speed that the SR-71 could reach, the leading edges of certain panels could reach 420 degrees centigrade. That meant the panels on the outside of the airplane had to be able to expand a serious amount to cope with that heat. So that meant when it was cold and on the ground, there was massive panel gaps in it. So fuel would literally piss onto the ground while it was sitting there. I love that f it level of engineering. Anyway, it was through the power of four V8 engines, two under each jet engine, that allowed the SR-71 to become the legend it now is. For me, engineering peaked right there. Okay, now on to our next epic use of a V8 engine. If the SR-71 was used to take pictures of stuff like Soviet nuclear sites, this next V8 was fired up if the Soviets turned those two keys and clicked the big red button. This thing is called the Chrysler Bell Victory Siren and it was used to alert cities of impending nuclear attack. This siren was crazy loud. It could reach 138 decibels, the loudest air raid siren ever. And it was built between 1952 and 1957 when the Cold War was at its peak. It was built by Chrysler and used their 180 horsepower 5.4 litre Hemi V8. That engine was mounted to Dodge Ram chassis rails and these things were put on the top of buildings so that they could be heard for 25 miles around. They gained the name Big Red Whistles, and thankfully they were only ever used in testing. To use it, you'd fire up the V8 and then pull a transmission handle that would then trigger the siren. Most of them have either been decommissioned or have simply been left out to rot, but according to the internet, there are some still in existence in these places. So if any of you guys watching this right now live in any of these places and have some spare time, do go out searching for them. And if you find one, take a picture, put it on Instagram and tag me. My tag is at Mike underscore Fernie. I'm gonna be super interested. My final use of a V8 not in a car kind of is in a car, but not for the same reason as most. 
Many of you guys will know what this thing is. It's Bloodhound SSC. It's a jet engine car that is looking to break the land speed record. This project has been plagued for year after year with financial issues, but they've had out fairly recently doing 763 miles an hour with the end goal being a thousand miles an hour. A Eurofighter Typhoon engine powers the car, but there's a Jaguar V8 on board that has a very important job of its own. The 5 litre F-Type V8 is there purely to power the fuel pump. Bloodhound needs the full 542 brake horsepower from that V8 to supply enough fuel to the jet engine to give it the full send. Before the Jag engine, the engineers originally spec'd a 2.4 litre F1 Cosworth V8, but that was soon seen as too expensive and too fragile for this specific job. So the Jag engine powers the fuel pump that needs to send at least 40 litres of jet fuel per second to the jet engine to send Bloodhound hopefully up to 1000 miles an hour. Whatever you think of JLR's products, that is bloody cool. The V8 is a handy piece of kit then, but if you've been subscribing to our channel for anything more than a couple of months now, you will know that the chief of the engine layouts for me is the V10, although I will fully admit that the most legendary engine layout is the V8. Whether it's to win a race, to start up a spy plane, or simply to power your daily driver. Long live the V8.